You know, I and I said it in my uh, I said it in my intro video that I wanted to talk about you know books and and other life philosophies that have really impacted me. And you know, I am a Christian, and um, you know, really want uh, to glorify God with my life and love and serve others. And you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't use this um, what may be a small opportunity on YouTube to hopefully uh, shine some light uh, onto you guys and to use the, the overflowing grace that God's put in my life and hopefully use some of that excess uh, to pour onto you guys. So, um, of course, you know, as a Christian, you got to read the Bible. You know, it's huge. Um, this is God's inspired word to us. And, um, you know, God is, is infinite in, in all of his ways. And, and it would take a lifetime to even just begin to, to grasp really the complexities of all that. Fortunately for us, um, the important things about God and Christianity are easy to grasp. Um, but it's cool because you can just, you know, you can read the Bible every single year and still learn something new because of God's infinite complexity. So um, bottom line, if you are a Christian, you need to be reading the Bible. I need to do a better job of it. Um, trying to read it every day. Usually end up reading it a few times a week. Um, I, my tendency is to read books uh that talk about principles or ideas and they use lots of different verses. So, um, that's still not a bad thing, but at the end of the day, this is God's spoken word to us. And it's, it's, it's one of the main ways he communicates to us. Um, and you know, there's so many ways you can use the Bible just to learn about God, learn about yourself, learn about what you are supposed to do as a Christian, learn about the warnings that God gives us to say, Hey, you shouldn't be doing this. Not just because I decided, you know, one day that you shouldn't do it, but it's because it's what's best for you. And this is why, um, and, and then, you know, it's also great to memorize the scripture and to have those verses in your head. So when you're tempted or when you're sad or mad or whatever it is, um, I get sort of anxious sometimes. It's great to have those verses where you can just rely on the promises of God and just remind yourself of that. Um, so the word is a really great thing for that, the Bible. Um, but you know, probably one of the most influential books I've read about Christianity, um, is this book right here. Desiring God by John Piper. And uh, I have to say, I was definitely a Christian before I read this book, but I'd say this book and the ideas that are in this book completely changed the way I thought about my faith and about God and have really just helped me, I think, to become a better Christian and um, enjoy God more, enjoy life more, and love and serve others more. Um, and, you know, it's it would there's no way I'm going to be able to sum this book up, but... Uh, in just a few minutes, but I really want to encourage you guys to read it, and I'll, I'll do my best here in a second, but the I, the main idea behind this book is that God is most glorified uh, when we are most satisfied in Him, and when you look at one of the basic uh, catechisms, you know, what is, what is the chief end of man, or plainly said, what is man's purpose, and the answer is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Um, and, you know, th there's a few concepts in this book that you're going to have to wrestle with. You know, like it seems super selfish of God or almost vain of him to require us to enjoy him and to glorify him. But when you think about it, when you realize that if God's real and if he's the God in the Bible uh, and he's all good and all powerful and if he made us, then he really is the only thing worth glorifying. He was, he's the only thing worth worshiping. Um, and so for him not to require us to do that would meet would make him evil like if he was this or 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 better put if he was this you know beautiful clean refreshing river flowing through the desert and i'm stealing this example from somebody it might be john piper i'm not sure um and you know all of humanity were people lost stranded in the desert and if he didn't require us to come to him and drink and be filled with his uh, life-giving water and to enjoy the green uh river bank and to just relish in that then would he not be evil? You know, would we not just be be thirsty out in the desert, just wandering around? Um, and it's also interesting to think that if he is real, if he did create us, you know, if all those things I just mentioned, he made us to do this. So him requiring us uh, to glorify him is what's best for us because that's what we're made for. Um, and, and really, you know, it's, it is kind of hard. If you're struggling with what I'm saying, I encourage you to read the book and, and struggle through these things. But... Uh, for me, it was just, it kind of clicked when I realized, like, you know, all of these other things in life are good. Uh, 
as long as it's not a sinful thing, you know, but God gives us all these good things. Um, but to, to replace God with those things, to replace God with our marriage or sex or alcohol or food or ambition, power, all of these things, for him not to get angry at us would be a disservice to him because he knows that none of those things can fill us and make us joyful and happy like he can. Um, and at that point, I was kind of like, oh, that makes so much sense. And then to also realize, and actually I wish I had this book down here with me. I don't. It's called Things of Earth. Um, Things of Earth. And I'll probably put the links to both of these books in the section below. Read this one first and then read Things of Earth next. Um, because that book explains, okay, if we're supposed to value God the highest, if he's our ultimate joy and pleasure in life, then what do we do with all of our natural uh, desires for guns? You know, like, should I not like guns? Can I not like this pistol simply because I love pistols and I think it looks really cool and it shoots really well? Am I making an idol of this? Uh, you know, food. Can I enjoy food? Can I enjoy sex within a marriage? Can I enjoy, um, you know, a beautiful sunrise? Or should I only enjoy God? Should I only praise God? And that book really helps answer that because it says, no, if you're a good dad and you give your kid a present, you don't want your kid to throw the present aside and say, Dad, I just want to enjoy you more. I don't want to enjoy this present. No, you give your kid that new bike, and you want him to enjoy that bike for the sake of the bike um, because you want him to be happy. As long as his joy and his focus isn't solely in the bike, as long as that overflows into his appreciation and his affection of you. Does that make sense? So we look at all of these things, you know, guns, gear, food, sports, whatever. All of those things are an extension of God and his glory and his enjoyment. So we can go to those things, enjoy them for what they are, so long as they bring us back to God. As long as we're like, God, thank you so much for this opportunity to go shooting today. You know, thank you for that little bit of extra money or that raise so now I can go buy this rifle. Thank you for that wonderful meal. You know, I know I don't deserve any of it. Um, but you are a good God and you love your children and you give us these gifts. Um, that's sort of the other piece that, that book kind of just tied in perfectly with this one, uh, to where it's, it's, for me, it just makes life so much better, you know, because I've been in some pretty crappy situations. Um, and I know some of you guys hopefully, uh, haven't been in really bad situations, but I know there's people out there who have been in really bad, bad places, way worse than me. Um, but I've really been able on the flip side to taste a lot of God's blessings and mercies and, uh, just, you know, he's just poured so many blessings on me, uh, in a lot of different realms. And so it's really great to say on the one side, God, you know, I think to quote Paul, he says, you know, Philippians four thirteen. I think I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That doesn't mean that you can go and be a famous quarterback because not everybody can do that. Not everybody's going to do that. What that means is that you can endure, you can get through anything because your ultimate satisfaction is found in Christ and he'll strengthen you through that. Um, you know, sorrowful yet always rejoicing. Uh, that's the concept there, which helps you get through the hard things in life because you realize God is your ultimate satisfaction. And then on the flip side, when you are in a season of blessing, uh, you know, when you do get to sit back and take a nice vacation or share a nice meal with, with good friends or go shooting, or whatever, you can still say, God, you are so good, you know, I love you, and I'm so thankful for you, and I'm thankful for these gifts that you're giving to me, you know, uh, it really just makes every season in life a little bit better, and, uh, you know, probably the best way I can think to describe it is, um, when you properly understand your place in life, when you understand stuff and its place in life, and when you, when you understand God's place in your life and when you have that totem pole properly organized, it allows you to enjoy those things the way you're supposed to. If you put so much energy and affection and time and priority into guns and gear, you know, and, and if, you know, or food or power or your job, and if that's what you're living your life for, don't be surprised when you're upset. Don't be surprised when things seem sort of empty. Um, don't seem surprised when you feel kind of hopeless. Because those things can't give you everything you need. It's a gun. You know, it's a piece of metal. It's a job. You know, it's a way you make money. When you're dead in 50, 20, whatever, how many years, 
you know, it's not going to matter. It can't, it can't save you from your sin. It can't take death away from you. You know, it, those things can't do, it, it can't give you full joy and happiness and all that stuff. So when you, when you try and make it the God or an idol in your life, you're not going to be able to enjoy it like you can. When you put God up there at the top of the totem pole, he can give you all those things. Um, and that's not to say that you won't be ever sad or anything like that. Um, but God will, God will get you through those things. He can save you from your sin. He can ultimately death. Yeah, it sucks. It still is a terrible thing. It's a consequence of sin, but we don't have to worry about it. You know, um, he can help you work through marital problems. He can help you work through, uh, social issues. You know, just to sum it up, all of those things uh, don't have power in your life anymore because God has conquered all those things. Um, and so, you know, if you put your job or sex or alcohol or guns or gear at the top where God's supposed to be, at that point when they fail you, when they let you down, you're not going to be that disappointed. You're going to be like, well, it's just, a, it's just a gun. It's just a piece of gear. You know, it's just a job. Um, and then you can move on. You know, it's not that big of a deal. So a lot of information. Again, check this book out first. Of course, guys, I would encourage you to read the Bible, but uh, read this book and then really see how we can love God and enjoy him instead of just, you know, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I can't have fun doing this. I can't have fun doing that. Um, I can enjoy God, really enjoy him because he made me to do that. I can be passionate and have my ultimate satisfaction in him. And then because of that, all of these other blessings he gives us, I can now enjoy those more because they're in the right place in my life. Um, and really, as C.S. Lewis says, the problem with humans, and I'm paraphrasing here, isn't, isn't that we don't seek happiness enough. Uh, it's that we don't seek it enough. We're too, we're too content with our mud pies, as he says, dabbling in sex and drugs and drunkenness and food. When there's real happiness to be had, there's real pleasure. Um, but we're too content in the slums with our mud pies when there's a when there's a holiday to be had at the sea, as he says. So I would encourage you guys to do that. If you're skeptical, pick up this book and read it and see how God wants us to live our lives uh, for the pursuit of happiness and, and joy. Uh, but we just need to make sure we're doing it in the right ways.